Welcome to episode 73 of our Football Manager Hobo to Hero playthrough. It's not a playthrough. Series. I don't know. A playthrough defines there's an, uh, there, there should be a definition of an end, right? So, um, yeah. You can see um, at least a fragment of the league table here. Here you go. We are three goals behind Selangor. They have a game in hand. It's unlikely that we will manage to catch up. I wouldn't rule it out entirely, but it's very unlikely at this point. Next match is against Cushing. You can see that right below my portrait here. Um, we lost against armed forces. Um, well, can't really show you. Can I? Here. And we did win against KL Rovers. So that was fine. This wasn't. Match against Cushing is in a few days. So last time we blasted them out of their own stadium. If I recall correctly. Where the hell is it? Up here, by Vo. With four and a half goals by Elbuck, uh, Chuck Till. The fifth goal was conceded by a defender after, well, Elbuck took a shot. So, for me, that's that's five goals by Elbuck, but whatever. Um, we also have a few things to, I guess, discuss would be appropriate, but. Then again, um, I'm not so sure how many people will be around today to discuss it. If that, at least one of the regular watchers will probably watch the Dortmund game, and I most likely won't. So, what's there to discuss? Well, I'd say we had a, we had an interesting few uh, sentences on the Discord about SSMI. Um, I added players to the shortlist. Uh, that happened off stream. And on this shortlist, if I can find it, there are three players by SS uh, TMI, which are a feeder club of ours. So I'm not 100% aware of the conditions of this feeder club relationship, so let's have a look at this at first. I should know this, but I don't. We can send them on loan. We have first option to buy players. All right. They have the option to request a friendly. They never did. And, well, in case we ever play in the same division, that's unlikely to happen anytime soon. They don't play in any division at all. So, three players uh, came up in their squad. This guy, he's a 15 year old, and it seems like he has good teamwork work rate and the physicals are fine, more or less. Obviously, there's a few um, interesting areas, but in general, this seems to be a very good player. He's an, he's an amateur right now. Youth contract, no wage. So I suspect we could get him for fairly cheap and could include him in our own youth team. So I guess the biggest question here is, is he really better than what we have? He's balanced and level-headed. Not sure. I do not tend to trust the star rating that much anymore, but then again, he came up due to the star rating, so I want to compare this. And I want to compare this to our own under-19 players. Well, first of all, we can probably compare him to Badrul Hisham. He plays all the time for us, so that's not too shabby in general. Plays as a wingback on support, sure, crossing could be better, dribbling is a little bit better, first touches. Uh, there's not much to say here, other than maybe the tackling is a little bit lower, that uh, would need to increase, but he's 15 years old. Mental is way better than Badrul Hisham, in general, just due to the teamwork and work rate. And on the physical side, Badrul Hisham is better, but again, he's 15 years old. So I think as a youth signing, this makes sense. If we could get him. They so... Guess we would make an offer, or actually just try to poach him if that works. Okay, nice. Doesn't want to join us due to um, lack of development. So we won't do that. Great. What about Yunus? Yunus is 17 years old, and uh, we had a comparison uh, on the Discord server with our other defenders, and quite surprisingly, he's not that bad. So. I want to compare him to all the other defenders we have right now, the ones in the first team, actually. That's Fakhrula. 
So technically he's definitely more gifted, not um, specifically on the defensive side, but he can play a pass if it comes to it. And uh, Well, the rest of it isn't that bad either. Patrulla is very spe uh, specialized, so there's no surprise there. On the mental side, that's more surprising. His positioning is lower, but the rest of the attributes is definitely better. And on the physical side, it's a wash, at least in, in aggregate. He is way too weak for a central defender. Then again, he's 17 years old, so I suspect this might increase, and it might increase. Well, how do I put this? Until he's 26, he will probably go above 6. And if he doesn't, we still have a player with better personality than Fashola. Most likely, because he's fairly pro and level-headed. That's a good combination. So it's highly likely, too, that he will get there. I do not know if he's susceptible to injury. He had a bruised foot at one point. I don't think that counts. Would he be interested in signing? No. He wouldn't. Sadly. I wasn't aware that this is an issue. So last, by no means least, this guy. Similar situation. I'm not really sure if we need him though, but for the youth team, this is probably a good signing. We can always loan him back to them. He is also on an amateur contract and he doesn't want to join us. I wasn't aware of this. Interesting. So, um, this is an issue actually, but I was hoping that we could uh, poach the best players of their squad. Apparently, we can't. So. Uh, that settles this affair. Next. Um, this has not been discussed on the Discord. So, I personally think that we should have a look at our squad. And I fiddled a little bit with all of this. So, what's the best stats of the squad? What's the worst? If we look at the general um, stuff, we don't pay them enough. Well, great. Transfer value is really low. That these two are. Um, somewhat intertwined. We have a really low average wage, uh, age, which is good for, from the perspective of development, right? So that's not too bad. We look at all positions and the attributes, we can see that passing skill in the squad in general is very low. First touch is low, decision making is low, strength is low, as well as leadership. So let me phrase it. Uh, in a clear manner, I don't care about the leadership. I really don't. I don't think this is relevant at all. At least, uh, as long as we have one or two leaders, and preferably some that are great leading the squad, he's a 10, so he's not good at it, but he's not horrible. And the leadership 9 of Ankung is not much better. But it will do. So I don't care if the leadership is 7 in, in, uh, on average. That doesn't matter. This? This is concerning. So, despite playing the possession based system, our passing isn't great. Neither is the first touch nor the decision making. So, we can argue we're technically, technically challenged as a squad in general. Let's see if uh, this is the defender's problem. Well, somehow. A little bit. Passing's better in midfield. First touch is still fairly bad in comparison to the rest. And the decision making is still horrible. In particular, the midfielders seem to have issues with the first touch. And, well, decision making is uh, as low as it gets. For basically all of them. Okay. So, I will actually put this down on a sheet of paper, if you can believe it. Let's see. We know that the decision making is fairly low. And you will you will see where I get with this, maybe. But let's have a look at the goalkeeper stats. Um, so goalkeeper stats are only relevant for goalkeepers. And if I look at this, well, command of area is low and agility is low. But that's just a reflection. I think much a little, basically. Um, I had a look into this in detail, and well, how do I put this? I would rather not focus the goalkeepers on a particular area. Well, command of area maybe is a good idea. Kicking command of area and agility. Okay. Is there 
would see. Is there any training that we could do in theory for goalkeepers that includes command of area, kicking? Well, this includes kicking, obviously. And specific training for command of area is hard to come by, it seems. In fact, it's not in here. One on one through no, no command of area, no command of area, no command of area either, and none here. So, as a result, I think we can't really focus on that. Focusing on kicking doesn't make much sense. We distribute in a short manner, so that's not useful. And agility, well, um, I guess agility is good for everyone. If we go to the physical stuff here, we can see that this club has issues on the physical side in general. Acceleration is fairly low in comparison to the rest. In fact, we are the worst in the league. Uh, same here, agility. So acceleration, agility, pace and stamina are really low. The rest of it is okay. That might be related to the fact that I had a look at strength and jumping reach for strikers as well as central defenders. So we are average in that regard, but the rest of the league is just faster. And well, um, has good mobility in general. So we have issues with mobility. That's it. And also uh, sustaining it. And it doesn't get much better if I look at the certain subgroup. Well, the striker group, but then again, the striker group probably involves Elbuck, and that's about it. So I wouldn't overinterpret this. In fact, this is more important, and that's bad. So we don't need general physical training, do we? We need quickness. So acceleration, agility, pace, and stamina. Is this something that we can get? Well, it's in this sample, obviously, but if we go to a specific physical sample, there's acceleration, agility, and pace here. So we can have quickness training, in particular, if we wanted to have. You can also have endurance training, obviously, for the stamina, but I don't think that matters. I'm not sure if the squad will like it, though. Let me put it that way. But we know now that we need acceleration, pace, stamina, and agility. In no particular order. So that's an issue. And I'm strictly looking at the stuff that we are worst at right now. Over here, glass, not a cup. Now, well, obviously, I will go through the rest of the stuff now and have a look at our training schedule. And we will find out that some of the training has just been bullshit. We train stuff that we don't need. And uh, we do it neither uh, from the perspective of, uh, of our playing style, nor from the perspective of what's easiest to get. So I think it, it makes sense to go through this stuff. Okay, we do play a possession-based system most of the time. In fact, we have a lot of possession. So uh, I guess the chest would be to make the most of it. But as we can see here, well, we are fairly good at it. but. We are not the best at it anymore. Build score is 38. So, I don't know. Either we do not create it enough, or we don't hit the back of the net enough. On the other hand, the goals conceded is 16. We are best at that. Uh, there's always the argument to be made that conceding less uh, might uh, turn out to be um, still favorable. If we score five more goals, that's uh, not worth more. Or, no. Five more goals is not worth the same as conceding five less. Conceding five less is worth way more in this situation, because five goals more uh, will not result in uh, that many wet matches won. But uh, less goals conceded, uh, they, at, at this point, that's a uh, worth a lot. So, um, obviously, a focus on, on the defensive performance is much more um, to be favored here. But that's not uh, for, it's just math. It's not like 
I'm the one uh, pushing the defensive agenda here. Uh, obviously, I want to score 5 or 10 goals more. I just think, mathematically speaking, it makes sense. So, let's have a look at the other areas. Let's have a look at defense. Well, shit. So, our defenders have bad positioning. Heading is really low. Pace is not that high. In comparison to the remainder of the league, and the strength is fairly low. Looking at this, it seems like our defenders need to focus on defending overall. The only thing they know how to do is jumping reach. So we need to focus them on defending on the ground. But then again, the heading is fairly low. And if we include the midfielders, it gets even worse. Yeah, great. Um, so I suspect um, we have an issue there. One, one day of rest for what? Also, welcome to the stream. So, the worst attribute here is heading. Well, is it England? That's normal in England. Like, they call it an, uh, it an English week after all, right? So, I don't know, rotate. <laughs> Have fun. If we look at midfielder attributes here, I guess that's for midfielders only. Stamina is very low, tackling is very low, decision making again is very low. We knew about decision making already. Um, I guess the tackling I wasn't aware of. And uh, in general, technical attributes. Yeah, you do that. I, I mean, it depends what's expected by the board. You might want to follow with that, or I guess prioritizing the Europa League makes sense. There's, that's where the money is, right? But, well, it depends. So, what's the issue here? I, I guess the passing isn't that bad in comparison to the remainder of the league. The long shots are fairly low. Quite surprisingly, I think we scored a few goals from long shots. Stamina is very low. I don't know why. So we have an issue with stamina again here on, on midfielders. But the worst is the tackling. And the decision making. So let's have a look at the tech. Well, we could just have a look at the strikers, but this is Elbuck only, so it barely matters. And Elbuck's mentals are bad, and we know that. So I don't think we can interpret much by this. This, this is more useful. Most of our midfielders do some attack duties, right? Finishing is fairly low on most of them. I don't suspect that this is much of a concern. Heading is very low. Anticipation is low, of the ball movement's low. Yeah, I, I recall, um, I, I think you, um, you mentioned that last time. How's it going so far? Given that you're in the Europa League, it can't be too bad, right? Then again, I have no idea where they were um, back in 07, 08. I think I mentioned that last time. <laughs> okay. So, I think the biggest issue here is anticipation and off the ball movement, right? If we want them to be able to contribute on the attack. And then let's have a look at the physical side. So this is for the entire squad with the exception of the goalkeepers. I don't really care about the physical attributes of the goalkeepers, do I? And as we can see here, acceleration low, it should be low, pace low. We've been here. Mental side? Well... That's not bad, 7.38. I think we, we have the odd player with a similar rating here, and we're very fond of them. So, that's a good rating, overall. Well, I don't know how it is in, in the Premier League. But, I guess that's not bad. 
So what's there um, to be concerned about here? Well, let me put it like this. The composure as well as the concentration are really low in general for all of the squad. It doesn't matter much if the goalkeepers are out of it. And I think everyone would um, profit from having better mentals in general. So off the ball movement's also very low here. Sure, if I take out the defenders. But um, it's still low. So the entire squad needs um, concentration as well as decision making. Maybe some flair. Um, the, the overall mental stuff is fairly low. So composure is low, concentration is low, and again, decision making is low. Um, that said, decision making is on an 8. So there's just better decision making overall in the league. Technical. So what do we do about technical attributes? Well, that seems to be, how do I put this? There seems to be three holes here. Heading, finishing, dribbling. And it doesn't get better once I include I don't know, only the strikers. Finishing is very low overall. That said, this league is full of poachers, so I don't suspect that this is much of an issue. This, though. Technical attributes on the midfielders again. Marking and uh, tackling is fairly low. First touch is low. Finishing is low. I guess I don't care about the finishing, but the rest of them are low too. The free kick taking is 3.75. Great. Heading is very low. So, in general, the squad could do with some technical attributes. Okay, so what did I find out now? I don't know, but let's have a look at the schedule, and I'll explicitly pull up one of our regular schedules, like this one. So the question is, what, what does the training contribute to attributes that are fairly low so far? So, the physical training here does train acceleration, agility, balance, etc. PP. Um, there's a few attributes in here that are not really a big concern right now. And the primary uh, thing here is, uh, well, we're going for maybe a bit of stamina, but uh, acceleration, pace, and agility seem to be an issue overall in the squad. Uh, what can we do, can we do there? Is there, well, first of all, obviously there's quickness training. Quickness training is really hard on them though, and it doesn't include a stamina. So I will go through all of this and see if I can find something that con uh, contains these attributes actually. So that's all technical training. I realized that this is probably not in here. Just wanted to make sure. What about attacking? Mm, seems to be more. There seems to be a bit of stuff in here that might be interesting. And there is no physical attributes in here though. If we go with general attacking, neither. So it's actually a physical session that's needed, I guess. So let me just say we use quickness here. All right. What does the overall uh, training contribute? Well, not much. It's spread out very nicely so that every attribute gets a little bit of training. But then again, we want them to train for their specific area and not so much for whatever the rest of the squad maybe needs or doesn't need. Right now? So congratulations on the win, I guess. We could do outfield here that would focus more on the technical as well as the mental attributes. And we have issues with the technical and mental attributes here. So from my perspective, that makes sense. It also increases team cohesion a little bit, but we don't have issues with team cohesion anymore. So it's not a major concern, um, which we will see later here. Um, there's no problems there. 
So I think this reduces the the workload on the team. And the goalkeepers will focus on their individual roles. And that makes sense to me. They don't need attributes that the remainder of the squad would need. Defensive shadow play. So why did I put on uh, put in shadow play in the first place? Well, um, due to the low uh, impact on condition. I wanted them to be sharp most of the time. Is anticipation, concentration, decisions, positioning, and teamwork an issue? Somewhat, but maybe we can get something better here. So it says, for example, the midfielders need tackling, stamina, decision making, anticipation, and off the ball movement. So basically, defending, but the whole squad could do with additional technical attributes. So, what about we train them as defender? Uh, as defending units on the ground, in the air, defending from the front, we don't know yet. We could also, well, to be fair, I'm, I'm, uh, to be, to be frank, I'm not a hundred percent sure what's the best here. So, if any of you ever um, bothered have a look at this in specifically um in relation to what the squad is good at or bad at um feel free to inform me so it was like this so far the general possession here general defending here that seems fine we need that penalties maybe set piece routines yeah sure so i i'm okay with these two Match tactics here. So decisions seem to be very low. Teamwork is not a big issue anymore. So we can do anything else that includes some sort of decision making too. That said, we will need to have some match tactics sessions in here at some point. Just to make sure that we retain the tactical familiarity. And um, I'd, I'd rather have some general ones in here. So that's fine, that's fine. This I'm not so sure about. Maybe we should uh, do some outfield training here. Increase the workload a little bit. It's barely an impact here. Team bonding. Well, I like a happy squad. And I also like if the team cohesion is fine, the teamwork goes up. That said, teamwork is not an issue anymore. So this is the more efficient session. This is less efficient. Let's swap this. Throw this one out. Do something useful instead. Not like maybe do the match tactics here to this here get rid of this session Preston or we do it like this nah probably something like this that's better so then we can do it in an outfield training here maybe that's a bit much so let's not do outfield training. Let's do something that's less impactful. What's needed? Well, if you have a good set piece tra uh, taker, why not? That's a good, good thing to have, right? I think the best we have is a six or a seven. That's not true. We we will have somebody that can take corners next season, but not this season. So. What do I do with this? Well, um, this outfield session is too much from my perspective. So I'd rather... What can we do? The least impactful should be tactical stuff or technical stuff. So something specific to this. So tactical stuff would be, for example, defensive shadow play, anticipation, concentration... So we have issues with anticipation on the midfield side, though. That's fine. So that's part of it in, in, in both areas and also on the goalkeeper's side for good measure. We could also do a general tactical session. That's too much, though. So we'll do defensive shadow play here. This, though, is there's very low impact here in general. So I guess we can do something more useful here. For example, a technical session. 
what's technically needed. Well, it says here, midfielders have a problem with tackling, stamina, decisions, anticipation, and off the ball movement. But also the whole squad needs technical attributes in general. So maybe possession-based training here again for more technical attributes. This, if we have a quickness session in here, this is too much. That's even worse. So we throw him out, uh, throw it out, and give him a rest. That's still high impact. Is he? I don't know how fa how fast is he? I I wouldn't know how fast he was in two thousand eight anyway, or two thousand nine, or whenever it is at your uh, your safe right now. But that's a lot. Obviously, I would prefer a recovery session here, but we don't have a physio and we can't get one. But was he ever that fast? Really? Um, like, um, was he ever a 17 or an, an 18 or a 19? Would you say? I'm not 100% sure. Because, well, I, I never even followed him back then. So I have no idea. So we didn't pick specific technical sessions just yet. Maybe we give him a rest here. Is there specific technical stuff that we need? So we play from the back and we try to do short passing play most of the time. So what do we need for that? I see. So, but maybe he wasn't that fast um, back then. Maybe that was the fair assessment at that time, at least in your database. And you chose to do it that way, and obviously he will not develop the way he did in real life. He will develop the way he did based on, on the basis he had back then, right? So... <sighs> chance conversion obviously is always important. Then again, I'm not sure if focusing on this... This does include the attacking uh, part, so all of the midfielders too. I don't think we need finishing, heading, long shots, and so on on all the midfielders. That doesn't make much sense to me. Chance creation, crossing. Our crossing didn't come up. So, not necessarily a thing. Uh, technique and blah blah. That's better. Not the worst of it though. What's this? Ball distribution. Dribbling, passing, decision making, vision, teamwork, not necessarily the thing we're going for, right? We know that we have issues with tackling on the midfielders. First touch, passing, anticipation, aggression, decisions, teamwork, and work rate. There's no concentration in here, otherwise this is fairly good. There it is. So, we're trying to restrict the space for the opposition, I guess. And we could try to find another technical session here. That's not too bad either. So this includes composure and decision making. Ball retention is not, not a bad thing to have. And the defensive uh, part of the squad also has um, marking, tackling, anticipation and so on. Same here, concentration is in, positioning is in, that's useful. So, from my perspective, this is a better way to set it up for now. I will save this. So, what did we do? More possession based, a little more quickness based. I'm not sure if this is too much in the middle of the season, to be honest. But, let's try to include this in the other ones. Actually, is it easier to load the other training? Probably easier to load this and include the include the match. That said, I threw out the team bonding, and I think some team bonding is useful in a way. So let's keep that in. 
Because this is a highly efficient session. I like this. Okay, um, well, if there's a match at this day, we'll confirm this. This doesn't work. We don't have a recovery session. What did we do here? Transition restrict was the way we went about it. That's fine. And we will save this as match Saturday. Oh no, I need to know the name. We'll turn no stuff match Saturday. Yeah, great. Doesn't even override the old one. Fantastic. So that's for Saturdays. I guess we move the match to Friday. That doesn't exist. So what did we have here? Penalties. Train penalties. They need a rest here, so this is fine. Confirm this. Save us. Done. No stuff because we can't afford any. Match Friday. I know this is what everyone wants to see on a stream. That's it. We need the different sessions. Yep, go away. And then we'll have one for Sunday. Oh, there's two times the transition to restrict in here. Or retention was the other one. Save this. And then match on Sunday. We'll have ball retention here and also again French session restrict here. Goalkeepers don't seem to have much to do here. So that's match Sunday. All right, so this should result in better improvements overall for the attributes that are um, an issue right now. Obviously, it's a little bit late in the season. And, uh, I should probably kick that one schedule. This one. That can go away. In fact, we can probably delete the rest too. I will just do new schedules at this point. There we go. Okay. So now we can use this. Well, or not. But there is uh, this one. Met I, I guess we can keep it like this for that week. But in those weeks here, we will have our regular schedule now. And uh, it might be that a squad is uh, really annoyed by this. Because there's not much strength training in here, for example. In fact, there's none. I see that correctly. Doesn't matter to me though. All right, that's what I had in mind for the start of the stream. So now next match against Cushing is in three days. Title race holds up. All right. Well, we have three matches. I I don't think it holds up at all. Selangor have a match in hand. So, assuming Cushing don't do us any favors, it's very unlikely that we will still partake in this. It's it's a three point, point gap in three matches. That's a lot. So, I doubt it. Also, I'm not so sure. That's entirely wrong, isn't it? It's still five matches to go. But the last match is outside the scope of the season. I don't know, scheduling for the season in Malaysia and football manager is weird. I realize, thank you. Alright, pushing. Uh, yeah. <coughs> 
We should defeat them, shouldn't we? Looking at this. Their striker is in good form. No, it's a classic poacher. Again. He has a hernia. So he's out. And Fukai. That's not too bad. His heading is a little bit bad. But it doesn't matter much. The rest of his attributes seem to be more or less fine. Not a bad defender. He's interesting from a jumping perspective, for example. Fairly fast. Positioning is bad. Technical attributes are not horrible, but not great. And uh, this guy's better. But again, positioning is fairly low. Seems to be attacking minded. So if we give them something to think about defensively, maybe we can dominate this match, actually. Similarly here, marking him out of the match might be an option. And also, uh, obviously, case of a hard tackle. So, yeah, I think a more dominating performance there would be a good idea. There's an issue there. These three are not available due to um, suspensions and so on. I think I will throw the entire squad out, actually, um, for the next match, and we will see about it. So, um, that's, that's a no-brainer. He needs to play. But the rest, we will need to have a look. In particular, Mod Jalil conceded two goals last uh, last time, so I don't think he will play. I'm really sad that we can't get the players from the feeder club, but maybe we'll have a chance later on. Once their contract runs out or something. Derby time. So we are slight underdogs actually. Why is that? What? 39 points. We still have 15 to gain. The record is 51. Hmm. Thanks, Choo Choo. Former employee of ours. That Choo Choo noises. And we have a new suggestion by an intermediary. I probably can't afford this player anyway, can I? I don't think I need a goalkeeper right now, sorry. Oh, well, let's have a look. Two team bonding sessions. Well, whatever. Oh, that's a trial list. I was confused for a second. So, apparently, this would, uh, in general, be a good goalkeeper for us. He's from Belarus. Well, it shouldn't matter. And I do agree. He seems to be good on paper, at least. 23 years old. How much money is this? Cool. Thanks for having this talk. So he's not interested. Apparently we lost uh, against Cushing. 
Okay, at least the under 21 did. So everybody expects a draw. Ford hope to see the team move into the AFC Champions League qualification places late in the season. Yeah, well, uh, you and me too. Yeah, both. So, definitely. But we'll have a hard time achieving this with our major players being out. Let's have a talk with Elbok. So, last time out, he came on, didn't have a single shot. Four headers, none of them were any good. We did criticize him already. How's his form? 7.02. That's not horrible yet. Conduct is fairly good. Can't praise him for it. Can't praise the last match, really. I guess. I mean, I guess the passing would work, but that's weird. Training? Training grading is fantastic. We can do that. Okay, that's all I can do on him. Yeah, and uh, I do not think it's reasonable to play anyone else. Goalkeepers. Mol Chalil played last time, so... Passing was fine, but he conceded twice. Faced four shots, that's fairly... Well, saving uh, saves ratio here, and aggregate throughout all the games is 64% now. Chin Sum has... A little bit more at 81. So I guess he gets a chance. He's in perfect morale already, no use doing anything else. In case he needs to come on, you would need to understand why he doesn't play. So we'll criticize the fact that he conceded twice. There you go. Next. So on the right back position, usually Badrul Hisham plays. How's he doing today? He's still on the heavy match load, but we need to win this duel. The, the cup competition is not that important anymore, in a way. On, on the other hand, cup competition at least could result, if we win it, in some money as well as the nation Champions League qualify. No, it's, an, it's some sort of cup competition. Um, the, the Asian equivalent of the Europa League in, German, uh, in, in Europe, I think. Still, um, I will probably play Elbock. But Rol Hisham seems to be tired. Can we skip forward? Oh no, it's, it's today. Okay. So we need to um, try to find alternatives or play him. Training fairly well. So, But Rol Hisham. The alternative would be to play Halim. Friends well too. Didn't get used much. Left side is Roslan. He's fast. Dribbling's a bit low. Alim a good tackler and how's his uh, positioning? Let's have a look. He's not a great uh, tackler. Positioning is fairly okay. He's rather slow though. So I would probably prefer to uh, have Bad Rulisham on the pitch. Who else is a key player usually? Zakaria like suspended. Diego. There's no replacing Diego, is there? He's in perfect morale too. So I guess he plays. Who else is there available? Mazarin. Perfect morale too. Yes. Did train well. He didn't play well recently. Did he? 6.66. Okay. I don't know why I had this talk with him. Obviously, morale was perfect already. Ankun and McMenemy. So, Ankun's on the heavy match load. I know that Ankun is susceptible to injury. Same as McMenemy, but McMenemy didn't play that much recently. 
this can be improved. Now he's improving morale. So I guess this could be an option for him to play at once. Uh, and now we have the problem with the defensive midfield. So I'm not so sure how to deal with this. We don't have a register. We could play Ankun. There we could try Ghazali. Nah, he's useless at this. McManaman can't do it either, so I guess it's Ankun time. Dead, or we play with a defensive midfielder in this formation, which wouldn't be too bad. Say we play him here. Personalize this to ball winning midfielder. So there's no playmaker on the pitch anymore, but it does hardly matters at least. Yeah, keep it like this. That obviously changes the entire um what is it it changes the way we play, but that's not my primary concern right now. Maybe it still works. What about central defenders? So Mazer's available. What? This guy. They must have ruled the perfect potential on him in this database. I need to find out who that is in real life at some point. He trains so well. That or he has absurdly high potential. Might have to do with the fact that he never really got hurt so far. Or did he? Barely. I think he was susceptible to injury though. So yeah, he plays. What's left? Well... What the fuck, Rula? That would be the standard. Recent form was that. Could be better. But he's definitely better than Madnor or even Amad. So. I think Fakrula will need to play. Again, all of them are under heavy match load, so this will be hard. But we want to win the league, so we play them. Baru's banned. Zakaria is banned. So I guess the right wing explains itself. La Costa Lima is the only one available here. Still trains as a winger. We use him as an inside forward right now. Why is that? Because he's bad at it. He's bad both ways. So I don't know what's going on here. And inside forward does cross less often. Dribbles more though. Can't dribble. Take more risk. Oh, there is some sense to this. He has flair passing and technique. So I guess inside forward it is. But in that case, he should probably train for it in the future. Probably won't remain with the club anyway. So yes, let's use him like this. Interesting, these two might it might be conflicting. Um, these two might attack the same space. Then anyway, again, we play against a 4-4-2. So again, against a 4-4-2, a 4-4-2 should have weaknesses in the middle, right? So if we overload the middle of the pitch with yet another player that cuts inside, so that makes it four, basically, that try to go through the middle of the pitch, if we include McManamy there, that should be hard to deal with, in a way. That said, oh, morale is good. He played recently. Came on, had nine passes. So the passing was perfect. Form isn't last match, he created a chance. There's no use. Criticizing him on a 6.7 rating, I think. Arcee's morale is perfect, but he doesn't fit the tactic for now. So, what's left for the bench? 
I guess Mount Nor is the better one of the two. Kamarudin, obviously. Ankun's available, so he will sit on the bench. Hamad's there, Harsi's there, and then we have two spots left. So due to the bands, I uh I guess Sing and Ahmad can come along. Or we pick somebody from the under twenty ones. But I think uh we have them in the squad. In case they we need them to play. So uh, let's bring them with us and see where it takes us. And if we don't have appropriate replacements on the bench, uh well somebody will need to make do. Right. Sure. So now he signed a pre-contract with them. That's unsurprising. Right. Tactical meeting against Cushing. Let's see where this goes. So for the next match only, what do we do? First of all, who are the two central defenders? Well, he's shit in the air, that's for sure. That's probably the worst I've ever seen. Well, his heading's 12, but he's 1 meter 66 and he's a central defender. I don't know what's going on there. So, we can float it in, maybe. The other one isn't that bad. This is not horrible, but still, Elbok is a better jumper. So, we should have a good time there. What's with the goalkeeper? Command of area is decent, aerial reach is decent, mm, might be an issue. So maybe we stick to mixed crosses after all. You got crosser. Barely. It's interesting, the longer I look at Mazarin, the less skill I see. And he's been with us for a while now. He did improve, if I recall correctly. A little bit, barely. So maybe he was just the right player for the last few years, but needs to be replaced in the future. I'm not sure yet. Well, um... Trapped him on the inside, sure. A standard defensive line mid block. I guess we could do that. This one's a good dribbler, sadly. He's 34, though, and fairly slow. So the assumption is that if we control the match most of the time, or the ball, he will not have much of an opportunity to score. That said, he doesn't need many chances. This one, again, decent dribbler. He's 31, though. He's way faster than the other one. He pass the ball too. Mm, First touch and composure are fairly decent. This one's even better. I don't know how to deal with this. Actually, I would want to ease off tackles against him, but I don't think that works. Roslan. So that's a case of a hard tackle for me. He has fairly low dribbling, fairly low bravery, but the strength is one. Also, he can't jump. Um, composure seems to be a bit low. First touch is not that high either. I'm not sure about closing him down. Tight marking of the ball with nine, and he's uh, fairly fast, so I'd rather not. He's a northern person. Physically very challenged. Bravery is okay ish, but I still think he needs to be tackled hard. He's a very good passer. And the off the ball movement might be an eight. We might be able to mark him most of the match. So I'd still rather try. Composure is also somewhat low. First touch is okay ish, though. So uh, I'm not sure if I want to press him all the time. On the other hand, his passing is way better than his colleagues. So I guess we press him. Emphasis on him. He's their playmaker, more or less. Sorry. Eight points of passing, seven points of vision, by the way. How was his vision? 11, yes. Uh, again, a case of a hard tackle. I think. 
composure is very low. First touch is okay ish. How do we deal with this? Passing's better than the crossing. I'm not sure if I want to show him to the outside. That feels wrong. Roslan's case. He's left footed and again his passing is better than his crossing. I'm not sure where to show him either. That's weird. So our tackling is not really an option. Showing him somewhere is not really an option. Pressing him most of the time. Well, composure is low, but the first touch is decent. So we can try to go for it. In fact, we probably should on both. So we'll try to trigger the press on him. Mod Khalidi, though. So that's the defender on the left. The one that's prone to overlap, most likely. No, actually, he's not that. Well, uh, interpreting the position here, he will probably not play a very attacking role. So that's fine. Closing down this one is, is dangerous. Silver eye. Should probably let that off. Because Asnan will overlap. He's no good at crossing and his passing is somewhat bad though. Can't tackle him hard. So maybe we close him down after all. On the left side though. Well it says he gets forward whenever possible. Not sure if we want to deal with this. Passing's five and his crossing is good enough not to ignore him. That's for sure. He's a four point passer. We should probably be able to ignore his build up play. Same here with the six. It's not really, really bad, but it's bad enough that he will probably not play the balls, uh, the field splitting ball. This one is absurdly bad on the physical side. No idea what happened there. Ukai, on the other hand, it's a little better. So, did I forget anything? Most likely, yes. But I think this will do. I'm for the derby. Hmm. So, this is our derby against Cushing. We won the last one 5 0. -oh. We'll just tell him to give it everything, right? That motivated McMenemy at least. And I think excitement's there, pressure's there, so we'll just encourage them. Actually in a cautious manner, maybe. Okay, not too bad. He's pleased. Uh-huh. Great. Everybody feels they get along well with me, and that's about it. But no, I need, I need to figure out team talk. So, uh, no break now. Oh, obviously I forgot about that. Oh, there's people in the stadium. What's going on there? That's a Cushing supporter, isn't it? Of course it is. Yeah, Cushing brought a few people along the same city after all. This will earn us some money. Well, at least I hope, I hope it does. Can we get the result of last time? Most likely not. But maybe we can. How many people in the state? 8,230. We were seven and a half, I think, last time. Money! 
there's actual income maybe from this match. It's one of the two matches in the season that matters from that perspective. Sari is shown a yellow card. Who the hell is Sari? That's a midfielder. Interesting. We could try to force the issue through the middle of the pitch. More often than not. Six minutes in. There you go. Could have given it back. Doesn't do. That's not too bad, but it might be upset. Uh, still. So there's somebody in the middle of the pitch. We have one man advantage in the middle of the pitch. We do have inside forward and an inverted finger in the middle of the pitch. I think we focus it through the middle of the pitch. Hopefully that works. The better passes are it's in the middle of the pitch. I think. So try to play through the middle, please. Not too bad. That's not too bad either. Nice. But there's nobody else right now. Black Costa Lima drifts outside on the wing. And that's it. Not bad. Nazrin takes the corners today. Oh my god, why? <sighs> Pushed him a little bit. Still no chances. That's one read more. Literally at least. Not Saeed. Find Sari. I think he had six points of passing, so in a way he's still dangerous. Great! We got the ball from Sari. And Ebok just retains possession. That's not bad. So we don't go through the middle after all, do we? Nice. Not bad! By the ball, the midfielder. He wanted to make an instant impact. Mazrin with another corner. Mazir flicks it on. Oh. Right. So we have 60% possession. Pass completion is decent. I would want a little bit more possession, but... Come on, why? I guess we play a ball winning midfield though. Why am I complaining at all? Let's put him on defensive midfield at UD. That's fine. Tell him to ease off tackles. Be cautious about it. Not bad. Being an offside situation. Well intercepted. There you go. Will he find the perfect pass? No, he won't. Interesting. Well, theoretically, there shouldn't be much of a threat, and apparently, it is. Very low great chances so far, if there's any. <laughs> so I will take that off to give him a little bit more flexibility. Maybe actually put it on fairly wide. To create some space in the middle of the pitch, if any. Oh, 
not bad. Got rid of him again. There's a cross. Oh! The keeper saves. That was the best chance of the match. I thought he hit it. Good pass by Diego. I don't know why Mahazu plays this kind of ball. Clearly not his strength. Definitely instructed not to do that, but I'm well defended. We probably need to unpull for the second half. No book, nobody in front of him. Well, Christopher is Diego. The tackle, Christopher again. But man, I mean, that was way misplaced. And that's all right. I want this to count, but it doesn't, it's offside. Mm. Sadly. <laughs> Slightly offside. Christopher, two good chances in this match. They're going through the middle works, um, now that we've stretched our pitch a little bit wider, it seems. Well, we stretched the formation to uh, just the pitch. Let's encourage them once more. They can do it. But we seem to have a really hard time in comparison to our last match against them. His day is fairly boring, most likely, so far. Massive Elbok. You still have five goals to score, Elbok. Diego will be suspended next match. Okay. So, it's a really boring draw so far. That said, we didn't give away any chances. So, um, I quite like this. But we will need to sub these two up. The two. I, I guess in his case, there's no match load, but the card is bad. So, let's bring on Ankun for him. Who will play as a Regista. Hopefully, he can do this. And in his case, I guess it's Amat time. Amat. Hmm. We could try McManamy in another role. As a DLP. Not really. Let's keep Amat as a... I guess we keep him as a box to box, despite not being really capable of doing that. Though he will take more passing risk, though, as he can. And the rest of it, he will take it easy. I think that's fair. Go to the dressing room. Though, overall, this hasn't been good enough. And, uh, uh, I will probably specifically tell him that he needs to do better. Alright, short break, then we'll do the second half.
Okay, let's go. Maybe tell these two. <laughs> Make a difference, come to think of it. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's do this. So Jake was missing. If this is not it, give him a second yellow. Apparently it isn't an issue. Just with him now, come out. Mm. Well, I just have to buy the old book. Make men a minute now. For Anku, not bad. Let's play a little bit. Mazarin. Mazarin. Mazarin's cross. That doesn't work. Acosta Lima. Find some out. That's another foul. Mazarin. I'm out. There's the cross, and it's. Well, bad cross, and it's not a good header either. I could have gotten way better with this. They seem to distribute the ball in a short manner too. Then again, doesn't seem to work for them. For now. Should we press a little bit more? Did that take off? No, there he is. I thought they took off Sari, maybe. But they didn't. You gotta be kidding me. Of course! Of course! This... Ugh. If there's ever been a goal that has been undeserved, it's this. Since we soon could have also saved this probably from that angle. Hisham's on a yellow card now. Sari has the second shot of the match. For pushing. That was dangerous. That pass did work out fine. This... I don't know what's going on with the Sari person. But he plays such a physical game. So hard. Great. Where's the killer ball? That's not the killer ball. There's no penetration there. a little bit higher though. Press a little bit more. We're used to this in another formation, but we're used to this. That's not bad. Um, just get a corner? We'll get a corner. I think Badrul Hisham will also need to make way due to the yellow card. So welcome to the pitch, Helim. Cross more often. Mm. 
Oh, maybe. Get out there, turn his finger around. That's something, but not great. So, that was, of, it was an offside situation in the end. Armed forces seem to win against Pahang. Well, as long as we lose this match, we don't need to deal with the other. Uh, don't need to bother looking at the other results. That's not bad. Boom, Ahmad doesn't take the shot. Neither does Ankur. But an interesting idea. Ankur. And Mazarin. Cut a little bit inside, he doesn't. It's a penalty! We take penalties, that's fine. I'm okay with it. Thank you very much. So, Elbok, can you put it in? Of course. Nice. <laughs> and now we keep it up. 21st goal of the season. To be fair, maybe five or six of these are penalties at this point. And I think that's three people too. So, now we can uh, I want them to turn this thing around. The Muslims are on a 6.2 weight in these days. Why did that happen? He's frustrated. Hilbert wins the ball. Well done. Well, that also uh, marks the return to his good scoring, by the way. Hilbert. Maybe a penalty was just what was needed. Ankur. So many players up front. Mazarin. Acres of space. Come on, do something with it. Do something with it. That's not bad. Christopher. Not offside. How? How? He was six meters away. The need to hit the goal at least from this perspective. Okay, I wouldn't even have hit the goal. But sure. What's on the bench? So, Harsey's still on the bench. Elbog is exhausted. That doesn't really help. Kamarud is on the bench. Mazrin is exhausted. That does help somewhat. somewhat. Uh, Queen subtracted stuff, that's alright. Modnor for one of the central defenders. Not really primary concern right now. I think taking off Elbog is the primary concern. But then we need somebody else to do his job. He can't do it. Um, wanna be striker, Harsey? Well... What's the alternative? There's not really any. And I really don't want Elbuck to be heard. So, we put on Harsey as a striker. Uh, get that one goal, Harsey. At least you're faster than Hillbook, I think. They are entirely exhausted, though. You can do this. Chris 
Wechsel für Rüdiger den Zeit. Nope. Hamad. Kamarudin. That's a great pass, actually. That was really a wonderful idea. <sighs> Now they sub off players. 13 minutes. We'll have a look at the corner and afterwards. At these players. Okay. No, it's not useful anymore. So let's have a look at this. They brought on some guy named Abdullah. Bad crosser. Passing is okay. Apparently he's considered to be a midfielder and he plays in the right back position. We are not the only one with an experiment here. I think probably showing him to the inside in that case. And the other one is the right midfielder. That's not bad. So that's that his bravery and, and his strength are fairly low. And we have somebody with all the yellow card on the pitch at this point. So we might as well take it on hard. Also recovers the ball. No. Oh, there. There's Anton. McManamy. Is this a bad pass? Apparently it wasn't offside. We can... what can we do here? Arcee can't jump. So... I think it makes sense to go for low crosses now. Arce will take the corner himself anyway. Alright. Come on, let's get this in. We need to win. That's it. Costa Lima, Arce again. Arce for Amat. Well controlled. Back to Kamarudin. Not back to Kamarudin. And now we just pass the ball around. Good idea. Make my enemy back to Kamarudin. Amat. Mm. Sorry, is still on the pitch. We got a yellow. Roslan, okay. RC, the Costa Lima. Good idea. So, with or without the penalty, we had the better chances. Well, if we lose this, at least uh, we are sure that we will not get the title anymore. If we win this, the situation's a little bit better. If it's a draw, it doesn't matter much. So we might as well go for the win here. That's not offside. RC, yeah, that's a good pass for Christopher. Nice one. Oh. Doesn't get the ball into the middle. Maybe you should have continued his run. Then again, he ran out of time. <laughs> All right. Five minutes. We'll go very attacking. Who cares? Let's try to score that one goal. Ankur, Amat. Well, Harsi, attack the space, please. Or don't.
Hold on. Do we have the ball? In fact, Amart has it and loses it again. Christopher, can you get that in the middle of the pitch somehow? That's actually not that bad. Let's see. Abdul Halim with a throw in. Parsi, well controlled. Ankun. Abdul Halim again. Don't lose it. Give it back to Ankun. That's not Ankun, that's Mars here. That's better. Parsi. Is offside. Two minutes. Amat. That's a foul. At least I think it should be. Come on, closing down. Now, that's a perfect opportunity. Please play that one pass that we need. That's not the one I was looking for. Oh, come on! Last shot. That's not it. Well, an effort has been made. By the way, hi, host guy. I didn't see that, sorry. We will not get the result we need. It's a grab draw. But at least we got some money. And we got that penalty, otherwise it would have been really bad. So... We, got un we were unlucky again. But I think I'm disappointed that we didn't win this. That motivates everyone. Okay. So... Best finish ever so far, points wise. Alright. Let me have a bathroom break and afterwards we'll continue this. Here be. So we had a draw. Okay. 1-1. One, one. What does this mean for the league? <laughs> well, Selangor didn't play yet. So this is more or less done at this point. At least I think it is. Um, if they don't manage to win these two matches, or at least one of the two, um, I will be highly surprised. But it barely matters anymore. Because the comp uh, competitors Pahang and Sarawak United did not manage to win either. In fact, they lost. So we might make it to the second place after all. And that one will be entirely useless because um, the winner of the cup gets the qualification spot for whatever the, the alternative to, uh, to the AFC uh, Champions League is. So, uh, that, that's because we kicked Sedangor out of the cup earlier this season. So, um, well done. Well done. First of all, we need to turn this around again on forces, though, if we want to stay in the cup competition. So, that's the only chance to get a qualification spot for... what's it called? I don't know. Winners qualify for quarterfinal. I'm not sure. Hmm. Well, we need to turn uh, this. Uh, well, we need to win by two goals against our forces. That's not impossible, but it's very unlikely given our recent form. 
We also need to rest the players, I think. Look at this. There's a two-day gap. Sure, we can try penalties, but really, it's highly unlikely that this works. We'll do outfield here instead. And uh, all team bonding is fine. That's all good. So, everybody that is on a heavy match load or has low co uh, condition needs to have a break. So we'll send them home. Costa Lima is probably not that important in this situation, so he can train. Anko needs a break too. Baru and Zakaria are available and will probably be needed. Winning rest. Send them home for a day at least. Mahazir will be really heavy. There's a two-day gap only. Juan Servin is available again. Theoretically. That's that last time he didn't perform at all. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't matter to us, does it? Well, Elbuck, congratulations on scoring again. Hopefully, you can remain that way now. It's so annoying, it's just a few points. But as you can see, we started conceding much more than at the start of the season. And this is a new record attendance. I forgot about this. 8,233 watched a match against Cushing. If only we had one. So, what does this mean for the club finance? Wow. Wow. It's a, it's a net positive of uh, 1,500 euros. That's nothing. Then again, the entirety of the season, basically, we're in a deficit. If you see this decline, ouch. Oh, okay. Abidin is unhappy with the extra training. About, it's about the high amount. So we'll take him off. Cares. Sure. So. What do you guys think? Season's basically over, isn't it? We need to win again um, against armed forces by at least two goals to make it in into the semi-finals in the cup. There's four matches left. There's four matches left, and it's a two-point gap. But Selangor have six matches to be uh, to be played. I doubt that. We don't even play against them, do we? No, we play against, uh, well... Ugh. I nearly threw my, threw my mouse at the second screen. I don't know why this happens all the time. Welcome back. Uh, so... Sabah is a local rival. Well, no, a historic rival. It's to the east of uh, Borneo. Iraq armed forces again and shorty team. But to be honest, I don't see us making 12 points here either. So maybe that works later on. Who knows? Mega Menemy gets a contract extension. Oh. Yeah. I I should probably just exclude this sticker. It might be the number one at this point. Given that you use it as some sort of a greeting, uh, greeting ritual. There's one day's wages of fine against Diego and Batral Hisham. I tried to sign the young players from the from the club that uh, was discussed on the Discord. They don't see us as a good development option. That's a quite a statement. So apparently our youth... Uh, I guess the, our support of the youth players is not good enough. 
now we need to go uh, get at least two goals against armed forces and not concede any. Oh, Ahmad has been called up. Is this a senior cap? Yes. Yes, it is. So he plays against Iraq and Qatar. Well, maybe. Not bad. Huh. Chuchu isn't at the club anymore. Sorry, I fired him. <laughs> and it is not due to the fact that he um that he earned any money because he didn't. So the reasoning was twofold. First of all, he did some scouting in Malaysia and that cost us money. Yeah, I threw him out. Threw him out. He's not there anymore. That's been a while though. There he is. I fired free stuff. Exactly. Because he wasn't free. Well, he the, the money um, for his wages didn't exist. But um, he still took the odd trip here and there um, around Malaysia. And that cost us a bunch of money we didn't have. So given that we could use it anyway, um, I fired him. There was no money left in the budget. And um, we didn't really need um, the, the additional knowledge of players at this point. So I thought I'd save on, on uh, the, the trips that he does, not on his wages. Also, um, there was, just in my defense, I thought maybe the fact that we can only offer 50 euros a week might be related to the average wage in this, uh, of the staff. So maybe it could have been my fault for having all of that staff employed for no wages, uh, for no money whatsoever. And for that reason, the director of football. I think his secondary job is as a scout. Let's see. Yeah. So Amaran still works as a fo uh, director of football slash scout. Um, he's looking for... Um, well, I don't think he does any scouting other than the next opponent. And it's fine with me. I don't think he needs to do the round trip over Malaysia because we're 4k in the red already the the scouting budget basically depletes itself without us doing any scouting it's just for the trips to uh, for to the next club so yeah finding other players is really hard from that perspective also but that would imply that he so malaysia has two islands right you're aware you realize what this means Within Borneo, okay, maybe. But 80% of the clubs in the Malaysian League are on the other island, whatever it's called. It's not an island. It's the, you know, the, the part that's, uh, to, that's the northern part of Malaysia that's uh, to the south of China, basically. But really, roughly speaking. So he would take the trip there all the time just to watch under-19 matches. By plane, usually, I guess. So, can you imagine what that costs? I mean, I, I, I can do that, sure. But this will be minus 20k. Um, can I? That's not that many, I think. So, that would be Sabah, Cushing, Sarawak, um... Maybe a Rod of Peter Club, I don't know where they're located. In fact, we should find out. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know if we can restrict it to that. So, say we add a new assignment. Great recruitment focus. So, we don't care about the position. Say we do it on, up until, I don't know, 20. Doesn't matter much. Current ability is not that important, but they need to have maximum potential. So something like this. It's an ongoing assignment for I don't care whom. Sure. 
areas well i could do under 19s under 21s and so on i can't really i can't even restrict the area anymore because there's no scouting budget so this is really absurd but the, the scouting range here dictates how far we can go we can basically not leave Cushing because we don't have any money anymore. So the the, the scouting package here, um, I realized this recently. The scouting package here also determines where we can scan to send the scouts. It's it's not only paying money or getting some knowledge; it's also where we can send them. So this, um, how do I put this? At five k. Uh, a season 4.7k are depleted just for the right to scout for uh, to go scouting for the last 300 euros if that makes sense so obviously i can adjust, adjust the budget oh no i can't because we're done we don't have any uh, transfer budget and we don't have any transfer budget because the wage budget is depleted so i mean i guess i could send him to the under 19s but he will not leave cushing he can't afford the fuel. <laughs> That's, I mean, I, I mean, I can try. Maybe um, he goes into the red. It would be very much like Saravak to do this, right? So let's try any position from the tactic. Who cares? Like this. Really good potential. Somebody up until the age of 20, maybe. Ongoing. That's all fine. And we will restrict it to the under 19s. Maybe the under 21s. Well, under 21s won't help much, so we'll do under 19s. And if it's under 19s, this barely matters, but whatever. Uh, well, under 19s can still include players that are um, 19 years old or maybe 20. So we'll go on up until 20. Sure, I'll do this. Will it help? Hmm. We'll see if he comes up with some ideas. You might be right. But it will definitely deplete money. So, no recommendations. Yeah. Great. I don't know what's going on with him, to be honest. He must have absurdly high potential. That's the luckiest signing of, I, I guess, this save at this point. Mahazir. Dead or his professionalism is, I don't know. Must be 17 or 18 the way he trains, but he has 15 points of determination. He's not resolute, so he can't have professionalism. Maybe a good combination of above average ambition and uh, professionalism. I'm not sure. He trains really well. And the same can be said about Harsey for some reason. By the way, I did change training a little bit. Uh, if you're interested, I will... Um, it's here, you can probably not read this. But um, I focused on, on the categories that we are the weakest in right now. And that fit our playing style. So more based um, more focused on possession a little bit more quickness because we're really bad at this in general and uh, a little bit more focused on um technical and tactical attributes we should probably also praise the players in here shouldn't we so how are you doing journal Anything new with you? That's fine. Oh, I think he's gone. So, um, 
Restricting it to the specific island would be an interesting idea in general, I think. It's just not possible. Oh, that's bad. So, you, I'm hoping you recover um, fairly well. And uh, pretty soon. Which reminds me, um, I learned recently, so I have no idea what, what kind of job you have, right? And you don't have to tell me. But um, I learned recently that there isn't, and it's, it's actually quite intuitive. There's no uh, linear relationship between the amount of uh, time you put into a workout or um, even into uh, the into the, the volume, I guess, um, of the workout and um, the results. The relationship is basically um, the, the first lift. N no, I don't. Well, with one exception, obviously I have a, I have a slight puppet laying around here. It's in the other room. Um, there's some needles in the back right now. And I, I glued some hair on it and uh, it, it has a name tag. It says cherry mullet. But um, you don't think that's uh, that's an issue, do you? But otherwise, no, I don't practice voodoo. There's there's just you know my children not a shrine with that puppet. Oh, everybody's down. Throw them all out. So. This is the match to end all matches, I guess. After what season will be over, more or less. Conceded last time. Can we tell him? 6.6. .6. Don't concede. Well, at least we are in agreement about that. But uh, yeah, going going back to the going back to the workout stuff. Um, apparently, doing doing I don't know. Um, a regular YouTuber would recommend like I don't know five five times workout a week. Uh, but you can you can basically have sixty or seventy percent of the results with uh, once or twice a week, even just an hour. So um, having a low grade um no not low grade low amounts of workout and low volumes whilst uh, still lifting some weights or doing some running or anything basically twice a week will give you about 60 or 70 percent of the results at least to to science so that's fairly encouraging for everyone that does nothing right and if i'm i'm assuming now but this this is a more general statement so Pretending you had, I don't know, shift work at a desk, for example, 40 hours a week for four days. Um, and it has nothing to do with physical activity. Um, one time a week would probably be able to help a lot with back pain. Or maybe a second time a week. And basically everything, whatever you want to do, would help a lot. So, But that's for a general you, obviously. And I thought that was very interesting, because most people think it's a linear relationship. But uh, you might as well, I don't know, lift 30 kilograms as a deadlift, and uh, it will probably help a lot. Even though it's nothing. Okay. So, we could play Mazarin again. Great. His recent performances have been sub subpar. Also substandard. Kamarudin's inferred a decline for some reason. Why? Well, that's today. We need to we need to set up this thing. So, luckily, Zakaria was banned in the last match, so he can play. Still not used to playing as a register there. Hmm. He did improve a little bit. I think he declined prior to that, though. How's it going for him? 
Well, that won't help. But as a defensive midfielder, that's actually quite impressive. Looking at this, that's fairly well. Also as a ball winning midfielder. So maybe trying to train him as a regista was just the wrong choice. Yeah, obviously. Well, he might get it at some point. How about Segundo Volante? That's not much better. As I said, maybe at some point. But he might be part of the defensive unit and that might be the issue. Uh, just out of interest, uh, if you're willing to share, do you do any sports, Chironolid? Because I certainly do way, way less than I should. So I'm, I'm quite interested in real life examples of other people. Okay, down the wings it is. So Harsey can make a first team appearance this time. Last match wasn't great, but it wasn't too bad either. Heavy match load on Elbog. One love Pekka is not available. I guess the best striker we have. Oh, it's a cup match. So, Juan Servin can play. By the way, I warned him about his uh, performance in the last match, and he reacted in a positive manner. So, that's not bad. Can't do anything else here. We need a physio. That improves his training, uh, his, his morale though. Elbuck, could you please recommend a physio maybe? Well, he doesn't know about anyone. Alright. What do we need? So, Badrul Hisham is on a heavy match load. I think Halim will play at this point. He knows how to do the role. He doesn't have enough match practice anyway. And, uh, well, there's still the opportunity to sign him if we want to. He doesn't have a contract extension, which is fairly low. Not sure if I want him. But theoretically, we could sign a 17 year old that was actually blindsided, uh, blind signed as a loanee last time. Diego's available, but not ready. Baru is available, and, uh, well, definitely more ready than Da Costa Lima, for sure. Even though, uh, this is concerning. Raw, well, performance-wise, he did train really well, so that's great. Well, even his technical stuff could go up. We don't have a replacement for the box-to-box, -box, do we? I mean, a mutt, theoretically. We could also... Go all out bunkers. Put him on. No. Keep Juan Servan here. Make him what he is. Deploying forward. In this position. He doesn't train that way, but it hardly matters. Can't change it. He... I think he can dribble more. He's a good dribbler. If I recall correctly. Yep. Uh, what else? He's enough tackles most likely. Shooting less often? I'm not so sure. His shooting's fine. And as, a, as an attacking midfielder, we could use a mod. He's not used to this role anymore, though. Uh, let's take all of that off. I think he trains as an engage. Doesn't he? Yes, he does. He's just not used to the formation, apparently. And also not to the role, for some reason. Can't shoot. Can't do any of these. 
still not used to it. Okay. Uh, well, whatever. We trained him in this role. So... That's certainly a bit of a weird relationship, but it might work. Jumping reach is fairly great. 13. That's really not bad. And we could use Uncon here because there's nobody else available. So, go all out attacking with a different formation. This time. And we will keep these two. Obviously. Right. Oh yeah, it's match day already. So I need to figure this out. Um, well, I think I'll play these two just because the end of the season is more or less done. Either we win this match or it doesn't matter much if they are still available or not. We might as well get the odd loss and the odd draw with the other defenders throughout the last matches of the season. So Nor comes along, Kamarudin comes along. Uh, but Rul Hisham, obviously, we need a right back. He can come with us because why not? Mm -hmm. Diego would be needed, wouldn't he? And then, first of all, obviously, and Da Costa Lima or McMenemy. I mean, I guess in this situation. It might be useful to have one Lalpeka, but he's not available. So we'll do that Costa Lima. Tactics. So this is new here. Hi, welcome to the stream. I didn't know Real Madrid was a nation. All right, let's see. It's been a while that we played armed forces. Well, we played against armed forces. So, this guy has good dribbling, but the bravery and the strength are really low. I'm not sure how to deal with him. Off the ball movements are really good. I don't want to leave him open there. So, I think I'll ignore this and they need to deal with it. However, they want. Dribblings not high. I'm probably going at least normal here, if not hard. I'm not entirely sure about it. Same here, bravery and uh, strength are really low. Composure is fairly low and the first touch is bad, so I think triggering to press on him makes sense. He's also right footed only, so I guess we show him to the left. That works. Rose one. Uh, dribbling's low, bravery's low, strength is low. This is a case of a hard tackle if I've ever seen any. Right footed. Well, I guess we show him to the left, given that he's a winger. So, that shows Esha to the outside, which he, well, he would need to cross, he's bad at that. And Roslan to the inside, so he would use, he would need to take a pass. He's better at that, but his vision is fairly low. Hopefully that helps. Uh, what about the midfielders? Well, he's a shitty passer for sure. So we will leave him open. Mm, dribbling's low, bravery's low, strength is low, hard tackles. Interesting setup. I know we need two goals, but... Same, same as last time. I feel like these are really bad. In general, these players. Well. We don't need to leave him open, but we definitely can tackle him hard again. Can also press him. Can also press him. They both can be pressed. And uh, Sharvin, that's the best passer in their midfield. Wow. He has no off the ball movement whatsoever. Nine points is the best passer. Same here. 
Tackle him hard. Same here. I don't think we need to mark him tightly. Neither do we need to mark him tightly or him. Oh, this is a 7. So I guess we never mark them tightly. He might be useful sometimes. Hmm. Same. Is any one of these really weak? Yes. On his right foot, apparently. And he's really weak on the left foot. Oh, oh menu. Here we go. Dribbling's low, bravery's low, strength is okay, so no hard tackles there. First touch and composure are really bad though, so we triggered a press on him. This might be bad on a, from a tactical perspective, but he's one to go forward anyway, as it seems. This already... Well... I know, defender, but tackle him hard anyway. Same here. Really. These are all physically weak. So, we need to show them. Hopefully there won't be any red cards today. We could also try to float crosses in. His heading's fairly bad. But his jumping reach is way above the opposition's. 13 points of jumping reach. He's a 10. He's a wide player, though. The two central defenders are a 7 and a 3. And the other wide one, again. Well, let's leave it mixed. Some of the crosses might end up with the wingers. Right, let's do this. Yes, I realize that he's not sharp, because he's a trialist for now. Still, in the cup competition, we will use him. Revenge. Always. So, what do I make of this? I think pressure is on already. So, we don't need to increase the pressure. And now, we can probably start the first half. Let's go! Hopefully we'll have a good time. We need two goals minimum. Preferably more. Because we lost the first, uh, first leg of this competition. Well, it's a quarterfinal. been a long while since we played a 4 2 3 1. And apparently we gave away a free kick. <laughs> I was close, so we can be very happy already. The attacking approach doesn't seem to work so far. There. Maybe that helps. Just the corner. Juan could have jumped. Takes the corner now. He knows how to do this, actually. That works. Doesn't find the correct head, though. Uh, Korea. Well done. No, they seem to press a lot. Yep, they seem to press a lot. I think last time we tried to penetrate, 
go in behind them and it just didn't work. So either we try the same again. Try to penetrate their defensive line um, with a long ball from time to time. But for now it seems like we have a little stuff to do on the other end first. Ancun, Ancun, Ancervin, Ancun, Ancervin, exchange passes. Come on, Zakaria. Do something useful. That's not bad. That's a penalty. Yep, it is. Great. Will we be able to get one goal with a penalty? Elbox not on the pitch. Who takes the penalty now? It's Harsey. Nice. One additional goal needed. That's just the start that we wanted. Go! I'm going to more now. Do it. What's going on with you? Don't be anxious. Well defended. Abdul Halim, Baru, Abdul Halim again. Good pass. Baru with the cross. Mm. I was hoping for a cross towards Harsi actually. Uh, Korea, Ankun. Not bad. Ooh. On his left foot. Well, we have another corner. And I'm quite happy to present a corner taker that actually knows how to do these things. Now we only need somebody at the near post that can actually put him in the back of the net. Looking for Bokari. Another corner. That's not good. No, this is offside, isn't it? Yep. That's good off the ball move, I'm still offside. Go, go, go. Bakula, I'm not. Good pass. Baru. Does this count? No. This would have been the perfect start into the match. Yeah, of course it's offside. Shit. So, no further chances created, apparently. I'm happy with the performance so far, but we need more. That doesn't help. Everybody on a 6.7 and below will be, uh, I guess, challenged a little bit. Now they're very motivated. All right. Let's just encourage a rest and hope for the best. Maybe we can get it into uh, extended time. Who knows? Okay. It's something. I can't really see the attacking play there, to be honest. Yes, we had that penalty, and uh, yes, we had that scene with the offside situation, but otherwise, there's barely anything created. Maybe a bit wider. And obviously this is always a danger. Well done, Mazir. Oh, that's upstairs. Fine. Halim. 
Mazarin is out on the wing. It was a good dribble. Only results in the corner though. He could have. He could have uh, run with the ball even further. Maybe taken the shot. There was so much space there for Mazarin. Did decide to take the cross there. Curry again. Curry and that's bad. Come on. I'm up with a free kick. Well, one. That's not a good header. Fifty-seven minutes. All right. Let's try something else. So. We have Elbok for a reason. Ahmad can come off. Elbok can do the striker now. Selman can play as Shadow Striker. He's in danger of being booked, I don't care. 6.6 .6 of Baru is um, questionable. Christopher can come on for Harsi. And now we have the classic overlap situation here. Don't really want to focus on one or the other. This is fine, I think. We could push up much higher. That's still okay. What's not okay is probably high press. Yeah, they have no idea how to do this. So let's stay with the mid block. He doesn't play that well. I guess Bertrand Hisham makes another appearance. We need one goal. One. But it is not we could use, it is we need. Otherwise we're out of the top. That's fairly well done. Anko and Baru. Drifts a little wide. Good cross. Juan. It's a corner. It's fine. He's anxious. He's struggling. He's struggling. Frustrated. I'll berate him. Due to the aggregate result. Does this work? Seems to. Come on, Christopher. Help. It could have been the day for a nice goal after the corner. We have 20 minutes. 20 minutes is not much. I'll take off Mazarin. Bring Kamarudin. Put him on support. Put him on support. Who's left? Diego. Not really an option. I think Baruch had come off. Well, he had a bad game, so that's your chance to cost Lima to do something useful. If you want to. Not that much time. It's the most, but not much else. That's decent. That's also a good pass. But Rul Hisham for Juan. Is this offside? No, it isn't. And now we go back to regular attacking football. 
because we need an additional goal but we can't concede so we turn it around in the second leg so far we've been quite lucky with that though to be honest nice goal by Elbert again It's still entirely possible that we lose this in aggregate. If we are not careful. After a scene like this, for example. That said, most of our strong players are on the pitch now. No. <laughs> emphasis on most and uh, Juan Servin actually will play throughout the entire match who's got the yellow we should focus down there right shouldn't we what's this Bokhari person he's a decent tackler and the positioning is okay but he's exhausted we have a fresh option on the right wing we focus down the right even though that's not our strong side and hope that Bokhari uh, gets sent off. There's also the central defender that's also on a yellow card. And if I recall correctly, Da Costa Lima is supposed to be an inside forward right now. Come on, Juan, find a good pass. That's a decent option. That's better. Da Costa Lima. Back to Christopher. Oh! So close. He did! He would have hit the target at least. Sadly, he also hit the hands of the goalkeeper. That was a really bad finish. I expected more from Juan. But at this point, we do deserve to win this in aggregate. It was a really lucky result for them in the first leg, too. They won by two goals, and I still have no idea how they managed to do this. Well intercepted, Mohazir. At this stage in the match, I'm impressed. Not bad. That's exactly what I wanted. It's offside. Well, I could have used a foul too. But we're here, I'm on the yellow now. Okay. We need a short break until uh, extra time. So, uh, BRB. Time for additional 30 minutes. Oh, I should give a team talk. <laughs> uh, well, it's great. I think we'll still go with revenge. So, what's there to say? You can do better. You can do better. You can do better. Same as Badrul Hisham, I guess. Might as well risk it. So we tell him. Dakota Lima had a wonderful match. Luckily. He's happy now. Elbog 7.4. I know Elbog at this point. I will not comment on this. It's really dangerous to talk to him sometimes. It just, just make your thing. And these two, maybe also Ankun, show them, that the, show them that we are confident about their behavior. They'll be okay. Actually, also with Chinsiusen. You can be better. Who knows? Maybe there's this one creative spark in Chinsiusen's head and he plays a nice killer ball straight over the opposition defense. I doubt it though, but... I'm quite confused that uh, Da Costa Lima plays this well. Might have to do with the inside forward role. 
So that wasn't my idea. But he is a good passer. So there's some sense to this. Uh, we still focused on the right, by the way. It's still acceptable. Yes. Yes. Perfectly acceptable. Bokhari is really in a bad shape now. They have a new central defender on the pitch, though. Who does not need to be marked. What's with this Gadid person? Same here, central defender. He's a better passer though, so I guess we want to mark him. Was was it 8 to 11? That's actually, that's really good passing for a central defender. I like this. Well, I don't like uh, playing against him. He runs with the ball through center and he can't pass the ball. He can be fouled off the pitch though, so we'll do that. And then there's a new striker. Always dangerous to have a fast striker on the pitch. This one, that's not a striker. That's a winger. Uh, well, we can tackle him hard. He has bad first touch and composure too. So we press him. And given that he's a winger, definitely show him to the inside. Good luck shooting on the goal with your badge a foot. <sighs> if I've seen that correctly. Uh, well defended by Kamarudin for now. First of all, is not that tired yet. Akrula, Ankun. Come on, Playmaker 2D is something you did for a while. Okay. Should probably tell Badrul Hisham to ease off tackles there. And maybe take fewer risks on the ball too. That's fine. Christopher. That's the outside, not the inside, but okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Amarudin, Takaria. Good pass. Doesn't get to take a shot. Ankun, maybe? That's not a shot, that's a killer ball. <laughs> It's a free kick for them. He's offside. Didn't expect much else, but... Floated cross. Bokhari with... I guess this was his head. Puts it behind. Christopher... Not this time for Elbuck. Juan... Juan with a good pass. Bye. Could have also taken the shot. So, that's half time. Anything to think about? I don't know. Maybe their position. Did they bring somebody else on? Mut Sharul, I mean, Nasharudin. I'm not sure if I remember this person, but it needs to be tackled hard. Due to bad dribbling strength and bravery. Let's go. If it goes all the way to penalties, I can't do anything about it anyway. Well, we did practice penalties. So, uh, there's that. And I will encourage them again. Hopefully this is uh, for the aggregate result still. But the B rating was for the aggregate result and work, so I think we might do. Well done. Zakaria pass towards Christopher. Not a bad pass. He's offside again. Yep. Sad face. They didn't have a chance though. If they score on the counter now, uh, at least we know that we had the chances to uh, manage to win this. I changed it, didn't I? Well defended by Elbok. Really well done. Mm, that's another offside situation, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I guess that's how an inside forward works. He's very focused on the attacking part. Car with a throw in. I'm 
There's another arm not here. Bro, close him down, please. That's fine. Well done, Christopher. And he just listened. Up. I'm starting to think maybe we have a chance here. Yeah. So um, we can probably go either anyway. But I think down the wings is even better. So down both. Because it's uh, both wide defenders that are fairly uh, in a bad shape. Well done, Kamarudin. Again, good defending. And we really rely on this. Cancun, Badrul Hisham, that's not offside apparently. Good one! Oh shit! We had the chances to decide this. In the extra time at least. We came so far. Good try. Bakrula, Ancun, Zakaria. Hilpuck and we retain possession for now. Is this offside again? It's not. It's not. Loaded cross towards Christopher. Well, that was a really unlikely situation to score from. Intercepted. You know, you could just give it to Zakaria. Or not. There he is. That's well, also fun. Go down the left. Yes, good idea. Kamarudin can also drift forward a little bit. Can't he? Maybe even have a cross. That's not too bad. Dangerous situation overall. Or not. Go! There's 30 seconds until penalties. Do I really need to watch penalties today? Get it in. If Leverkusen can do it, we can do it too. Apparently not. So, <laughs> the referee didn't even blow the whistle, but we will need to decide about penalty takers, so there's that. Uh, yeah. Zakaria is very focused. So, Zakaria takes the penalty prior to Chinsiusum, I guess. And then the rest of them hardly know how to do it. I mean, Marzir and Badrul Hisham at least are focused, so they can do it first. And Ankun. Ankun is a two. Not sure what's going on there. Let us put him here. Okay, penalties. Penalties it is. Good luck, guys. We certainly need it. You've got this. Okay, apparently the phrasing is slightly different here. This is a really important talk. 
We'll just encourage everyone, won't we? Try to give them some additional confidence. Good luck. Oh, we take the first penalty. That's good. Well, Elbuck, just need to put it in the back of the net. Easy, right? Apparently it is. If only we had a goalkeeper that is uh, known for eliminating penalty threats. Well, not this time. One serving. Come on. That's certainly not how you imagined your trial, was it? Decent penalty, no issues. The issues will appear afterwards. <laughs> Come on, get it. Oh, straight down the middle. This will probably go all the way to 11. It did last time. That's an acceptable penalty. Goalkeeper isn't great, apparently. Then again, neither is ours. Come on, save it. Save it. He had the right corner. Wasn't a bad penalty, though. Zakaria. Now we need to save a penalty. Well, that can happen. Oh. Last opportunity. We need to score and then we need to save one. This is really hard on him now. But obviously Chinsu Sum will take the penalty now. <laughs> what a burden. What a burden on the goalkeeper. Well, he hit that home nicely. Now save it. Should be easy, it's just Gadit that takes the penalty. Judging by the length of the walk though. Mm. Fuck. Well, Zakaria is to blame. Nah. They made it all the way to penalties and, uh, well, then we got thrown out of the cup. That happens. So, honestly, we, we lost that in the first leg. And I still don't know how and why. We absolutely dominated both matches. Sometimes cup competition goes this way. So, I will not complain here. Did we give it our best shot? I don't know. I don't think I can be too critical. I think this is a good statement. Apparently nobody else agrees, so... I won't say much. Maybe tell him I took him off because he wasn't good enough. That seems to work. Same with Baru. Apparently he was carrying an injury, that's even worse. Alim didn't play well. So that's why we took him off too. And I think Christopher is the same. He came on, but that's not good enough. For the rest of them, no issues. We lost this in the first leg. So that means we are out of the cup. Sadly. Zakaria would still go and try to shoot a penalty. Well, with two points of penalty taking, what did I expect? 
And Acosta Lima, funnily enough, had an assist, three key passes, and apparently a really good appearance. I didn't expect him to develop at all. I thought he was done. Oh well. It is what it is. So, no chance to go anywhere in the cup. And we still have four matches um, in the league. Selangor still have six. Season's done. That's it. I will not be able to continue streaming next week. So uh, maybe on Friday. But there will not be a stream tomorrow. And there will not be additional streams throughout the week. So that marks the end of it for now. Episode 74 will either be next Friday or um, actually the Monday after. Well, maybe on the weekend, who knows. But for now, thank you very much for watching. And uh, I will see you next time. Bye.